Okay, and let me share too. Okay, okay yeah, so uh, welcome to BFS orientation for backend development. We'll walk through uh, various topics related to the backend. Um, so some of the things that the platform engineering uh, provides are things like um, ecosystem maintenance. So on the back end, that's, you know, updating your gems, uh, Ruby, Rails, stuff like that. We provide developer support and tools and infrastructure as well. So um, things like uh, Helm chart maintenance, uh, maintaining the EKS deployment, things like that. Um, and like I said earlier, each COP member participates in a support rotation uh, for one sprint at a time. So you'll see many of us um, in various Slack channels. And the technical support team is available in Slack at the VFS platform support channel, which leads me to um, getting support using Slack. Um, I guess first and foremost, we do encourage problem solving within your team as a first step. So, you know, even getting stuff like peer reviews on PRs, um, you know, bouncing ideas off of peers or team leads, stuff like that. And then also many of the common answers can be found on the platform website. Um, I know many of you are on your first few days here, so I'm not sure if you've come across platform website as of yet. Um, but yeah, I would encourage searching there and then I'll do a little demo of the platform website a little bit later too. Um, but some of the more important channels are obviously VFS platform support, um, VFS engineers and VFS all teams. And those last two are uh, where some of the general announcements will be made um, for just notifications, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, so getting uh, help from the platform in Slack, it's made pretty easy with a slash command. So if you just type um, slash support in the message bar, um, it pops up this nice little message window where you can then assign your request to uh, the various areas of discipline. Um, here we have backend support selected, um, your request topic, and then the summary of the request. Um, from there, it is routed to a tier one engineer. These are somewhat technical folks, but not engineering. Um, so typically if you do need assistance from an engineer, that would be escalated to um, whoever's on the tier two rotation for support on the back end. Okay, so platform engineering, um, these are kind of just your main pillars of development on va.gov. Uh, so you have the front end, you know, you have your design system, component library, things like that. Um, the back end, this is the yellow part kind of where um, we will be talking mostly during this presentation. Um, so that contains like that's API and its sister repositories, things like that. And then we have infrastructure. So those are like your DevOps personnel working you know, with the underlying uh, deployment and AWS resources. And then the fourth one here is also important because uh, quite a bit the back end, I, I would almost say that the back end is kind of like a pass through layer to a lot of these uh, services that live on the VA network. Um, so the back end calls out to these external systems through the board proxy. Um, they are external to us, but we do work with them very closely. And it's a pattern that's you know adopted quite frequently throughout the code base. So I thought I would mention that. Okay, so just an overview of Vets API. Um, kind of like I mentioned, it's just a REST service layer um, for integrating with those. Um, well, you can call them anything from internal, external, or downstream. I've heard all of the terms. I typically go with downstream services, um, but those downstream services on the, the VA network. Um, it's consumed by Vets website. Uh, it's built in Ruby on Rails. We use Redis as, as the caching layer, which um, under the hood is uh, Elasticash uh, on Amazon. Um, it communicates via JSON. And so we actually have kind of like a nifty little uh, middleware in place because if you're working in Ruby land, you're probably working in snake case, but then JavaScript land typically expects um, camel case. So we have a middleware that converts those responses into camel case. Um, just a little tidbit, you don't really need to do anything there, but just a little uh, fun fact. Um, yeah, and so we use Sidekick for our background job processing. 
Uh, and then a little bit about the deployment. So that happens um, daily, I should say, during the business week, um, non-holidays. That happens um, 3 p.m. And that's kind of a manual sync for the production and sandbox environments. Um, dev and staging are on continuous deployment. So every time you merge to master, that is uh, synced automatically with Argo CD. Um, and just a few of the key repositories. Um, if you're working through the setup, maybe you've come across these already, but um, the big one, uh, Vets API, uh, the mock data. Um, the mock data is important because a lot of the services that we integrate with don't have lower environments. Um, so in order to work with them in our lower environments, we record a lot of those responses and that's how we're able to work with um, the data in dev and staging. Um, and then the VS3 Infra Application Manifest, that is where our um, Helm charts live for the EKS deployment. And so you will you may or may not work with the code here. If you have any um, sensitive data or secrets, then you definitely will be, but um, it's just important to know kind of where and how the deployment works. Okay. So there are two ways to set up Beth's API locally. There's kind of a native path um, where you'll be setting up uh, you know, the Rails app, um, Postgres, Redis, Clam AV, some of those uh, dependencies. And then we do have a Docker path as well. And instructions for both of those can be found in the readme. Um, and then I will actually link to, or I will send out the uh, slide deck as well. So you'll have access to these links. Um, and then on the right, these are just some key items for the Docker setup. So if you're familiar with a make file, these are some of your general make commands. Um, we have make up for starting the application, make database or DB for the database, um, running like the database setup, the migrations, things like that. Um, we've got like Docker clean, Docker rebuild. Um, so yeah, those are they're also listed in the uh, running Docker uh, setup document, or if you just want to go to the make file, that's fine too. Okay. Okay, and just a an quick overview of Vets API. Um, so it's composed of a variety of you know backend related items, most of which are already probably familiar to a backend developer. Um, so the sign-in, uh, login piece, uh, that's actually handled by the identity team. Uh, they're kind of platform adjacent, I would say, um, but nonetheless, they are in charge of pretty much all things identity and sign-in. Um, they are developing an in-house sign-in service, so we don't have to rely on an external partner. Um, it's called SSOE, um, and right, there's always issues with having to rely on um, people who are external to us. Um, and yeah, so session token, that's probably pretty obvious. That's used with single sign-on as part of authentication. Um, Ruby Rails, that's, you know, we've got a Rails in API mode, a Rails app in API mode. Uh, Sidekick is the backend job processor. Um, we use Redis for the caching layer, like I mentioned. Um, ElastiCache, Puma is our web server that runs the application. Um, and then we use uh, the AWS RDS for um, the Postgres database. And yeah, so Docker is just there pretty much because it's uh, a pillar of, pillar of our development and uh, processes on VA.gov. Okay, um, the deployment process. Um, so this is what I mentioned about a little bit earlier. Um, so again, I'll just repeat it. Um, lower environments, dev and staging, those are on continuous delivery. Um, and then right at a high level, this means uh, every merge to Vets API that builds an image, um, or I should first say it runs the check. So the linting, testing, security, it'll build an image if that passes, um, store that in ECR. And then um, from there, there's a a bot that makes a commit to the manifest and updates the image tag. And right for lower environments, uh, Argo CD is configured to watch the directory. And if it's uh, dev or staging, it'll automatically sync it. If it's uh, sandbox or prod that goes out with the 3 p.m. deploy. 
And I would say for lower environments, it takes about mm, 20 minutes in total for um, from start to finish for your merge and then to finish with the deploy. I know this is probably a lot, but we'll have some time for questions at the end too. Okay, and the manifest files. So that's API, like I said, it's deployed via um, manifest files and those consist of um, Helm charts that are deployed via GitHub pages. Um, and if you're not really familiar with Helm, essentially it's just a package, man package manager for Kubernetes. Um, and the charts are essentially just reusable templates. Um, and then Helm uses this packaging format called charts, hence the name uh, Helm charts. Um, and so our Helm charts are just composed of various uh, manifest files that contain um, your regular Kubernetes resources like deployments, config maps, uh, services, things like that. Um, and they're really great because they simplify the deployment by removing a lot of the duplication. And it also allows you to add versioning as well. Um, and so without them, we would have to manually create templates for all four environments. Um, and I'm pretty sure we went from having, it was like 14 or 15 files per environment down to like three per environment. So um, yeah, huge, huge, huge there. Okay, and a tour of Argo CD. Um, so we have some images here, but if you're not familiar, Argo CD is just a continuous delivery tool. Um, and we just use it to streamline the deployment of Vets API amongst other applications that are deployed. Um, and so Argo CD has a nice UI that allows you to just interact with an application to perform uh, various tasks like syncing an app, um, seeing an overview of the application state, um, an interactive terminal, uh, things like that. Um, and so each Vets API environment has its own application in Argo. So you can kind of see um, up on the left-hand corner. Um, and the bottom image, that is an overview of the pods. So the, that's like the actual pods that are running the containers um, that run the web servers. Um, so we have our Puma pods and then we have Sidekick Worker pods. And I would say most of the requests route to uh, the Vets API web pods, but we also have this notion of um, bulkhead deployments, which send specific routes via the ingress um, to their own set of pods to help mitigate issues like slow requests or latency or um, just to isolate logs, um, things like that. And so the Argo terminal can be used for things like Rails console uh, for backend stuff. Um, and then terminal access to the pods, it's actually controlled via GitHub Teams and there's a special access request for this. Um, and let me click here real quick. Um, and then, yeah, so if you do need Argo terminal access, you would fill out um, this issue right here and submit that. Um, okay, oops, huh. I'm lost. Okay, um, and then let me actually show off Argo in real time as well. Um, I think I have that loaded up here. So this is uh, Vets API production, and this is that interactive um, web UI that I was talking about for application state. So here you can see some of those bulkhead deployments I was talking about. So I think it's anything V0 feature toggles goes here. And the reason why that one split out is because of the high request rate. Um, we've got some other bulkheads for forms, healthcare applications, things like that, uh, mobile. So yeah, um, typically uh, platform engineers will be working in this space, but it is kind of good to get familiar with it as well. Okay, so pull request. Uh, so you'll likely be making a PR to Vets API. And so if you look, oh, sorry, you probably couldn't see that. If you look at the, um, the lock icons there, uh, that just means that uh, it represents a code owner of one of the files that you're modifying. Um, 
So what that means is that you'll just need one review by um, an owner, so a code owner to merge your PR. Um, Backend review group is the platform group, and we have an SLA of 24 hours to review PRs. Um, I would say if it hasn't been uh, the 24 hour mark yet, I wouldn't reach out, but anything above that, I would definitely submit um, a request in the platform support channel. Um, and then one thing just to note is that uh, just to make sure that all of your checks are passing, um, we understand that there's blips and, and things that happen once in a while, but um, we typically don't review um, PRs that have tests that are failing. Um, and yeah, so we also recommend that it's probably best to get a review from your team member that might have some more of the contextual business knowledge um, that goes along with your product, um, even if you do need a backend review group uh, approval. Okay, and just these next few slides are just kind of be an overview of certain documentation and links that are important. Um, so the software standards, we've got a code review guideline, um, a Ruby style guide, and then some yard doc uh, standards. Um, and for observability tools, I would say the most important for you is probably um, Sentry uh, for exception logging. Uh, Datadog is great. It pretty much is like a one-stop shop um, for event monitoring, performance metrics, um, APM. We also have logs for anything in EKS going to Datadog. Um, and so given that Grafana is actually being uh, deprecated, so I would recommend for most things that's API, go ahead and use a Datadog. Um, and then Loki is just kind of for generalized logging. So if you ever need to look into the forward proxy or the reverse proxy, um, Loki would be the place for that. Um, and then, yeah, AWS Parameter Store, we use that for secret storage. Um, so if you ever have any sensitive values, um, that's where those would belong. Okay, and I'll just do like a high level overview of uh, these documentation links. Um, so we've got some general uh, working with uh, VSP engineering um, and then the VETS API backend developer doc. So setting up and running uh, VETS API. And then if you need to do kind of like a full stack local development of uh, running VETS website as well. Um, and then this is actually, I won't, let me actually pull up the platform website. So. Um, for some of those general questions that you should maybe look here first before reaching out, um, this is where you'll go and this is what we call platform website. Um, so you can really search for anything. So let's just look for like feature toggles, feature toggles guide. Um, you pretty much can search for anything that, that you're thinking. Um, so yeah, that's a, a first stop, definitely. Um, and then these are just some screenshots of various documentation, uh, just working with the engineering team, the backend developer docs, um, walking through the native and, and or Docker setup, um, the base setup for VETS API, uh, natively running the app, um, and then how to submit your PR for approval. So there's some good stuff there on the platform website. And then this is just a screenshot of the API docs. So we host API docs via Swagger. Um, and then all, all endpoints, including new and old endpoints uh, do require that they be documented uh, via Swagger. Okay, and that leads us to the end. Um, any questions? <laughs>